to begin with what actually happens chemically in the atmosphere when lightning occurs. Well, among other things, the immense energy generated by a lightning strike produces nitrogen monoxide from the nitrogen in the air, which then reacts further to form nitrogen dioxide. In 1903, the Norwegian industrialist and scientist Christian Birkeland and his business partner Sam Aid took advantage of this process and developed the method for converting atmospheric nitrogen into nitric acid, which served as a basis for nitrate fertilizers. An electrical arc was formed between two coaxial water-cooled copper tube electrodes powered by a high-voltage alternating current of 5 kV at 50 Hz. A strong static magnetic field generated by a nearby electromagnet spread the arc into a thin disk by the Lorentz force. Before we start building a fully automatic and programmable Birkeland I device, let's first take a closer look at what actually happens here chemically. As can be seen here, arc temperatures above 1900 degrees Celsius are rather counterproductive, which is remarkable. Okay. Now that the dust has settled, I will start by showing you the device I built. I began the construction with the electrodes, which consist of tungsten welding electrodes. Tungsten is the chemical element with the highest melting and boiling point. To build the reaction flask mount I used maker beam and two custom parts made from aluminum flat bar for the pipe clamps. and two more customized aluminium mounting brackets for the main power supply. A plastic kitchen board measuring 50 by 30 by 2 cm served as a base plate.
This part here is a 24 to 12 volts DC DC converter and a bit oversized, but I still had it lying around in my lab. The kitchen board which is made of polypropylene is easy to machine. Thread cutting is also no problem. I used a CVS driver with a TV flyback transformer as a high voltage source. The circuit draws about 10 amps at 24 volts on the input side. Here you can see the air pump and a power MOSFET breakout board normally used to control the heating bed of a 3D printer. Another power MOSFET drives the high voltage generator. The blind seals for the U-shaped drying tube were made from 4mm thick silicon mat. The pump motor was suppressed by three ceramic capacitors and fitted with a flyback diode to protect the MOSFET from high voltage peaks. Another DC DC converter to convert 12 volts into 5 volts for the microcontroller. An Arduino Uno microcontroller takes over the complete control of the process and the reading of the sensors. A screw shield for the Arduino simplifies the wiring.
The drying tube filled with silica gel has a task of drying the incoming air. To measure the volume flow, I bought this mass flow meter from Omeron. This one-way valve prevents nitrogen oxides from entering the mass flow meter. A PT100 is used to measure the temperature of the reaction flask. The amplifier for the PT100 is a MAX31865. The temperature sensor was attached to the reaction flask with captain tape. After the screw shield was completely wired, I placed an LCD shield on top of it. When I powered up the device for the first time, this happened. Okay, not quite that bad. I only fried the CVS driver and the corresponding MOSFET during the initial startup because I had wired it incorrectly. Long story short, I bought a new CVS driver. I cast the transformer in epoxy resin to prevent spark overs and create a mounting base. A fuel filter serves as an air filter at the intake port of the air pump. A gas washing bottle with a frit is used for the injection of nitrogen oxides into water. Now it was time for a first test. My cat also really wanted to be in the video.
The Birkland 8 process is very complex. To optimize it, the entire process must be considered theoretically. Among other things, the injection of nitrogen dioxide into water can be optimized. However, that is not a part of this video. If there is interest, I will make a follow-up video focusing on the theoretical background and the optimization. Thank you very much for watching. Stay true, stay you.